Okay, my intros have been far too long recently, so let's make this quick. This is a series where I take a look at the actions of every character aboard the Oberdin chronologically. In the last episode, I looked at the officers, so today I will look at the tradesmen and their mates. Alfred Klestel. Klestel? Klestel? I don't know. Alfred is the bosun on the Oberdin, and he's from Austria. According to the glossary, he is in charge of general crew operations and equipment on the ship. Alfred can be first seen in Murder 2, where he watches the execution. He can then be seen in Unholy Captives 1, where he very narrowly avoids being spiked. We can also assume that due to his proximity to his mate and the actions that are taking place on the deck, he was directing the crew that were unloading the rowboats. In Unholy Captives 2, he can be seen looking at the bodies. I'm not quite sure what this expression in Pose is meant to signify. Maybe he's just frustrated with the incompetence of the crew. Additionally, this scene provides a good view of his whistle. Real life bosuns use these whistles, and it can also be found in the bosun store, providing good evidence that he's the bosun. He can't be seen in Unholy Captives 3, but in Unholy Captives 4 he can be seen exiting the bosun store. He's first seen in Soldiers of the Sea during Scene 4, where he runs towards the Crab Riders with a blunderbuss. We can assume he just received this from the gunner, as Christian is handing his mate a gun as well. In Soldiers of the Sea 5, he is still running. And in Soldiers of the Sea 6, he can be seen handing the blunderbuss to Winston, which Winston later uses to kill one of the Crab Riders. Neat detail. Finally, in Soldiers of the Sea 7, he aims a rifle at the other Crab Rider. I'm not quite sure where he got it from, since his mate still has the rifle from the previous scene, and I'll also use this as an opportunity to address a mistake I made in the last part. So in the previous video, I pointed out how I couldn't find the captain anywhere in this scene, despite the wiki and the book saying he appeared here. Well, as a great commenter pointed out, thank you by the way, he can be seen way in the background on the stairs. Back to Alfred. In the Doom 7, he can be seen tossing a rifle to Olus. This man really likes giving away his only source of protection. Well, it didn't work out for him very well, because in the Doom 8, we see that the Kraken has wrapped one of its tentacles around his arm, which we know from the next scene was later pulled off. Additionally, he is found in close proximity to his mate, which may help to identify Charles. Lastly, in Escape 1, he asks John and Olus, where is my Frenchman? To which they respond, Your mate was torn apart. This gives us the information needed to identify the fate of his mate, which is marked as disappeared in the book. Additionally, he says, Verdammt. In German, providing evidence that he's the bosun since he's from Austria. And since the bosun is the only person with a French mate, if you hadn't figured out who he is yet, I'd really question your intelligence. Finally, he foreshadows what we later learn in the bargain when he says, Soon after, he bleeds to death from his injuries. The East India Company later awards his estate 70 pounds for his actions. Charles Minor Charles Minor, played by Idris Elba, is the president of Northeast Sales in the US version of The Office. Hang on, I think I have the wrong Charles Minor. <clears throat> Charles Minor is the bosun's mate aboard the Oberdin, and he is French. Additionally, he wears a shirt featuring Breton stripes. Is that better, YouTube comments? Am I pronouncing it right this time? Which were traditionally worn by members of the French Navy. Although, as I pointed out in my second Oberdin video, they were adopted after the game takes place, so it was a slight mistake to make him wear them. According to the book, he first appears in Loose Cargo 1 and 2, although I think this is another situation where the commenters will have to help me because I cannot fucking find the dude anywhere. In Murder 2, he's pushing away the Formosans and stopping them from interfering with the execution. In Unholy Captives 1, he's helping pull up the cargo. This provides some evidence that he's the bosun's mate. And in Unholy Captives 2, he's just standing next to the bosun. Skipping 3, he's next seen in Unholy Captives 4, where he drags Philip Dahl to the lazarette. Charles can be seen in almost all of Soldiers of the Sea, excluding two scenes. In one, I believe that's him next to the line. It seems odd for a bosun's mate to be helping with the seaman's job, but I suppose if they were shorthanded, it's not unreasonable for him to assist. In two, he looks in shock at the crab riders boarding the ship. 
In four, he's being handed a rifle by the gunner. I'm not sure how he managed to make it downstairs so quickly while bypassing the crab riders. He doesn't appear in three, so we don't see him running, but I won't question it too much. In five, he's aiming a rifle at a crab rider just out of bounds of the map. In seven, he follows William Hoskett's instructions and shoots the crab rider, but his bullet goes through a fucking wall and kills Zungi. Just a little bit of collateral damage. I'm sure it won't lead to his estate getting fined or anything. And finally, in Soldiers of the Sea 8, he hits the crab rider with a spear. Sword? I'll be honest, I'm not 100% certain what that is or where he got it from, but that's what he's doing. Lastly, in the Doom 7, he looks in horror as Maba meets a similar fate to Peter Capaldi. And in the Doom 8, he is seen stabbing the Kraken while in close proximity to the bosun. Now, we don't get an actual death scene for Charles, and he's just marked as disappeared in the book. The way you're meant to identify him is through Escape 1 when we learn that the bosun's mate was torn apart. In the end, Charles was found guilty of murder for accidentally shooting Zungi, but his estate was not fined, probably because his family is in France. Henry Evans Henry Evans is a surgeon, he's from England, and he is solely responsible for allowing us to play the game. We'll get into why in a moment. Henry is first seen in A Bitter Cold 2, where he talks to Martin about the disease infecting some of the crew. This allows us to easily identify him as the surgeon. Additionally, the box you're given at the start of the game, which contains the pocket watch and book, can be found behind Henry, meaning that he possessed the pocket watch from the very start. Yet he never investigated how Nunzio died. I think this fucker just wanted to watch the ship unfold into chaos. Oh, and he also has a pet monkey, which can be seen watching over them on the bookshelf. Bonus detail time! In the scene, Henry mentions that he gave him some load, which, as somebody pointed out on the subreddit, slows down breathing and restricts oxygen intake. Let me remind you that he gave this to a man with an illness affecting his breathing. <laughs> So even if there was a chance, a chance that he would live, Henry said, fuck that, and killed him quicker. Okay, he might be a well-meaning guy, but Christ is he a shit doctor. Next, in A Bitter Cold 3, he's seen watching Abraham and William carry the body up the stairs while the monkey sits on his shoulder. In Unholy Captives 1, he can be seen watching the seamen lift some of the cargo. We can assume he was recently checking to see if any of these three people were alive, but they were not. Additionally, his mate is nearby, and unfortunately, the monkey is not present. In Unholy Captives 2, he's looking over the two freshly dead bodies with his mate to confirm that they are indeed deceased. And in Unholy Captives 4, he directs his mate to... Keep pressure here. ...while he attempts to treat John Naples. He is also the one that says... All's fine, John. Men in worse spots, I think. This provides evidence that the surgeon is a fucking idiot, because I doubt John's been in worse spots than having his goddamn leg cut off. In Soldiers of the Sea 5, he covers his eyes while Charles burns to death. We can assume he recently stepped out of the surgery room due to his proximity to it, and the fact that he's not seen earlier in Soldiers of the Sea. In Soldiers of the Sea 6, he attempts to help a mill down from a wall, which he was spiked to just prior to him dying. I will say that Henry acts very well under pressure, since he quickly jumped to help the crew, and he sounded extremely calm considering there was a second crab rider still alive not far from his location. And in Soldiers of the Sea 7, he abandons trying to remove Emil from the wall, and he looks behind him towards the remaining crab rider. Now we have Bargain 5. I'm gonna have to get into the role that Henry plays in the story for a moment. So, remember that box I mentioned earlier? Well, even prior to finishing the game, we know that Henry managed to escape the Oberdin because he mailed the East India Company said box, and he left a note to the player in the preface of the book explaining how he wants it filled out. Once the player completes the book and leaves the Oberdin, they mail it back to Henry with only bargain incomplete. The book is then mailed back to the player with an additional package containing a severed monkey's paw, which finally brings us to Bargain 5, because in Bargain 5, we witness Henry murdering his pet monkey shortly after putting it in the last rep. This is because Henry knew that when the player first investigated the Oberdin, they would not be able to access the Lazarette and complete the story. So with the knowledge of how the pocket watch works, Henry killed his monkey just so the player could know what was going on. Thank you, Henry. But, <laughs> before I move on, this scene proves 
that Henry was fully aware of how the pocket watch works. So I once again raise the question, why the hell didn't you investigate Nunzio's death? Okay, moving on. Finally, in Escape 2 and 3, he can be seen in a rowboat about to leave the Oberdin. The aforementioned box can also be seen in the boat. The location he escaped to is found back in the preface of the book because he tells the player to address the mail to Morocco, allowing us to mark him as alive in Africa. Unfortunately, he didn't live long because we later learn in the letter sent back to us that he died of an illness shortly after receiving the book. In the end, he is found guilty of abandoning the ship, yet his estate is still awarded 50 pounds for his good actions. And honestly, I can't argue with that, because had it not been for him, there would not have been any way that the East India Company could have investigated the ship in the first place. James Wallace James Wallace is the surgeon's mate, and he's from England. He can be first seen in a bitter cold too, with Henry and Martin in the surgery room. He can then be seen making the bed in a bitter cold three. This is good evidence that he's the surgeon's mate. In Unholy Captives 1, he's inspecting the bodies from the calling. In Unholy Captives 2, he's inspecting the bodies from Unholy Captives 1. And in Unholy Captives 4, he's keeping pressure on John Naples' leg as per Henry's instructions. Finally, in Soldiers of the Sea 4, he's clawed by the Crab Riders. Very close by, a bloody pistol can be found. However, for reasons I'll get into in a future part, despite the proximity, I don't believe that's James's gun. Personally, I think it was dropped by Zungi. In the end, James Wallace didn't really do much aboard the Oberdin, although he remained loyal and helped the surgeon in nearly every scene he's in, so the East India Company awarded his estate 50 pounds for his actions. Winston Smith Winston Smith is the carpenter aboard the Oberdin, and he speaks English. Now let me address the kraken in the room here and discuss one of the most commented on things about Winston Smith. Isn't it just a little odd that Winston is the carpenter rather than the carpenter's mate, seeing that he's black, American, and the game takes place before the Civil War? Well, yes, it's odd, but it's not terribly unbelievable. I'd like to preface this section by highlighting how I'm not a historical expert, but it doesn't take an expert to recognize that this is not an American ship, it's a British ship, and there's numerous explanations which may explain his position. It's entirely possible that Winston bought his way out of slavery, or alternatively escaped slavery in the US and just immigrated to England. Although saying that, the UK only abolished slavery in 1801, so personally I believe that he bought his way out of slavery rather than escaping. Anyway, he can be first seen in Murder 2 watching the execution. He's next seen in Unholy Captives 3 stepping out of the carpenter's shop to see what's going on. This is good evidence that he's the carpenter. Next, in Unholy Captives 4, he's seen with his mate carrying... something. I believe in my original video I said that it was a plank of wood, which would make sense seeing that he's the carpenter. But on my second inspection, it almost looks like the 19th century equivalent of a stretcher. Which would also make sense since they're right next to the corpse of William Wasim. He can be found next in Soldiers of the Sea 3, following this interaction. What's going on? Stay back! It's already no good, Hey! Come on, boss! No, get there! Hey! Cat! Now, if at any point you weren't sure which person was the mate, the book actually reveals it for you. Because it shows that the person who shouted, Come on, boss! was the one who died. Additionally, if you were confused about the line, Stay back! You probably misinterpreted it, because he's not telling somebody named Nick that fighting them is a lost cause, he's saying that it's done for Nick, meaning that Nick died in a previous scene. Moving on, in Soldiers of the Sea 4 you can see that Winston was also spiked, but he lived, and now he's taking cover. And in Soldiers of the Sea 5, we learn that he managed to remove the spike, which let me remind you, went all the way through him, and he's now running downstairs like a beast. Next, in Soldiers of the Sea 6, he receives the blunderbuss that I talked about in Alfred's section. But finally, in Soldiers of the Sea 8, he uses it to take down the final crab rider while being simultaneously spiked and dying from his injuries. In the end, I think we can all agree that Winston Smith is an absolute badass. And the East India Company agreed because they awarded his estate 60 pounds.
Marcus Gibbs. Marcus is the carpenter's mate aboard the Oberdin, and similar to Winston, he's American. Marcus is first seen in Murder 2, watching the execution with a cold, dead look in his eyes. He's next seen in Unholy Captives 3, sawing wood in the carpenter's shop. And in Unholy Captives 4, he can be found helping with William's body. Finally, in Soldiers of the Sea 3, he throws an axe at one of the crab riders, only to be spiked and die. As I mentioned previously, this scene can be used to identify him as he refers to Winston as Moth. In the end, his estate was awarded 30 pounds, even though he didn't really do much. Thomas Sefton Thomas is the ship's cook, and he speaks English. He's first seen in Murder 2, watching the execution while standing next to the butcher, although I will point out that he doesn't actually appear in the sketch because he's too far to the right. Next, in Unholy Captives 2, he boasts about his ability to cook the mermaid, starts inspecting said mermaid, doesn't listen to the instructions to stand back, gets struck by its tail and quickly dies, which causes everybody to stumble, lose control of the cargo, and then crush poor William Wasim. The only good thing about this team is that it allows us to identify Thomas because only the chef or potentially the butcher would talk about cooking the mermaid. In the end, Thomas is awarded 40 pounds for what? Being a fucking idiot. Not to mention he indirectly caused a death. How come Charles gets fined for accidentally shooting somebody through a wall, but this dipshit gets awarded for being careless and negligent, resulting in an innocent man's death? Emil O'Farrell. Emil is the butcher for the Oberdin, and he has a noticeable Irish accent, which can be used to identify him. He first appears in A Bitter Cold 3, where he coaches the midshipmen through slaughtering a cow. Let her hear. One swing. Get through the skull and stone her brain. I'll cut her throat when you've done it. This is a good way to identify him, since only the butcher would be performing this action. Next, in Murder 2, he can be seen watching the execution while standing next to Thomas. Similarly to Thomas, he's not pictured in the Justice at Sea sketch since he's too far to the right. Emil next appears in Unholy Captives 3, where he watches William's death, and in Unholy Captives 4, where he's blocked from entering the cargo hold by Olus. In Soldiers of the Sea 4, he's found pointing a spear at one of the crab riders. In Soldiers of the Sea 5, we see that he's unfortunately been spiked to a wall between the two scenes. However, he's unbelievably still alive. But lastly, in Soldiers of the Sea 6, he succumbs to his injuries and dies despite Henry trying to help him down. In the end, his estate was awarded 70 pounds, which seems a tad excessive, but maybe he was a damn good butcher. Christian Wolf. Christian was the gunner on the Oberdin, which the glossary defines as a military officer in charge of weapons and military procedures on the ship. Additionally, he's from Austria and he speaks with a noticeable German slash Austrian accent, which can be used to identify him. He's first seen in Murder 2 when the captain orders him to initiate the execution. Mr. Wolf, when you are ready. Right, sir. Ready, men. Aim. Fire. Since the captain addresses him as Mr. Wolf, this scene can be used to easily identify him. Next, in Unholy Captives 2, he's found either guarding or talking to some of the officers. He can be next seen in Soldiers of the Sea 4, handing a gun to Charles while standing in the gunner's store. This could also be used to identify him. And in Soldiers of the Sea 7, he can be found again in the gunner's store. Next, in the Doom 3, he can be heard directing the crew through firing the cannons. <laughs> However, they lose control of them, and then he's pinned to a wall by one of the Kraken's tentacles. Finally, in the Doom 4, the cannon, which was lit by Lewis Walker, fires and fucking decimates poor Christian. After his death, the East India Company awarded his estate 70 pounds. Olus Weater? Waiter? I'm not sure how to say that. Olus Wiatter is the gunner's mate, and he's from Poland. Although, honestly, I don't think he has a very distinct accent, even though, according to the wiki, he was played by a famous Polish actor with another unpronounceable name. Anyway, Olus is first seen in Murder 2, kneeling near the gunner. And in Unholy Captives 2, standing even closer to the gunner. I will say he has very, very poor trigger discipline for being the gunner's mate. 
He's next found in Unholy Captives 4, blocking Edward and Emil from going down the stairs. In Soldiers of the Sea 4, he can be seen either opening or closing the hatch to the cargo hold. Personally, I strongly believe that he was opening it rather than closing it for several reasons. First, his positioning looks like he's attempting to push it open with his back. Second, we know in Soldiers of the Sea 7, the captain shouts, the hold. which implies that the cargo hold was not already secured. And lastly, in Soldiers of the Sea 8, we know for certain that one of the crab riders did eventually make its way down those stairs. This just raises the question, why the hell did Olus open the cargo hold in the first place? And before you ask, I did check the other scenes and it's still not clear because in 5 and 6 the hatch is out of view and in 7 it looks like it's open but the hatch is obstructed, so it's hard to tell for certain. Speaking of 7, Olus can be found in the gunner store with the gunner which provides great evidence that he's the gunner's mate. Olus is found next in the Doom 6, carrying several guns up the stairs, further providing evidence that he's the gunner's mate. And in the Doom 7, Alfred tosses a gun at him, even though Olus has three by his feet. And lastly, in the Doom 8, Olus is seen dual wielding pistols and aiming one at the Kraken. Now, Olus plays a vital role in Escape, which I talked about in a lot of detail in the first part, so I won't give as much information this time around as to not bore you all to death. In Escape 1, he's talking with John and Alfred. In Escape 2, he's discussing potentially starting a mutiny. In Escape 3, he's running to stab Thomas, since Thomas overheard them discussing the mutiny. And finally, in Escape 4, we get a recap of what occurred between the two scenes. Hey! Who's that? Mutiny! Mutiny! Fresh no. no! But then Olus successfully stabs Thomas, and John shoots Olus. Now, like I mentioned, I went into a lot more detail in my first part, but the general consensus seems to be that while John was discussing the possibility of starting a mutiny, he wasn't fully on board. And he definitely wasn't fully on board with randomly stabbing midshipmen. So he tried to wrestle Olus's pistol out of his hands, only for it to fire and blast his fucking head off. See, Olus, what did I tell you before? Trigger discipline. It's very important. In the end, Olus was fined 50 pounds, which is fair since he did a pretty shit job the entire time. Duncan McKay. Duncan McKay is the purser of the ship, and he's from Scotland. According to the glossary, pursers account for all cargo value and trade transactions, and they also manage a small item store for the crew. Duncan can be first found in Unholy Captives 3 watching the cargo crush William Wasim. I will note that he's wearing a very distinct outfit unlike any of the other tradesmen that would be doing more manual labor, so it could be used as evidence supporting him being a purser since he would spend most of his time below deck. He's next found throughout Soldiers of the Sea 5, 6, and 7, cowering in his office. This is the most concrete evidence to identify him. He appears in the Doom 1 inside the escape rowboat. He's holding onto some books, which makes sense as they could be important documents relevant to the Oberdin. And lastly, he appears in the Doom 7, although it's difficult to tell exactly who he is since he only appears as one of the silhouettes from the rowboat that was overturned by the Kraken. In the end, despite cowering during Soldiers of the Sea, leaving the Oberdin out of fear, and being found guilty of abandoning the ship, his estate was awarded 50 pounds by the East India Company. Finley Dalton. Finley Dalton is the helmsman of the ship, and he literally only appears twice. First, in Murder 3, where he's been speared in the leg by Edward Nichols and his gang, and second, in the Doom 8, where he's been grabbed by the Kraken. His identity can be figured out due to the fact that he's near the helm in both scenes, not sure if that's actually the helm, and he's pictured near it in the Justice at Sea sketch. Seeing that he's marked as disappeared at the end of the Doom, we can assume his fate is that he was torn apart or drowned by the Kraken. And lastly, his estate was awarded 30 pounds. Edward Spratt. Edward is the artist aboard the Oberdin, and he drew the three sketches that we used to identify all of the crew members. Additionally, when he's highlighted, his initials ES appear, making him very easy to identify. Edward is first seen in Murder 2, drawing the Justice at Sea sketch. 
He snacks in an Unholy Captives 3, running to help everyone after the cargo fell. In Unholy Captives 4, he's being blocked by Olus. He's also holding a sketchbook in this scene. And finally, in the Doom 2, he's crushed by the Kraken while he was taking a shit off the bow of the boat. His estate was awarded 50 pounds. Now with all that over with, I am finally done with this episode of the character chronology. I apologize for it taking so long to get this out. I know a few times I said that it would be uploaded by the end of August, and well, that didn't happen. I kind of underestimated how many tradesmen there were, and it makes me somewhat nervous for the seamen, but you know, that's a concern for future me. I will mention that videos may be slower than usual for the next few months. Um, as it turns out, taking five AP classes isn't the best idea in the world. <laughs> and YouTube's not my top priority, but I will make an effort to continue with the uploads. All right, enough rambling. I genuinely hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye!